Okay, so we're going to practice using the organizations. For this, I'm just going to go into the organization service and get started. So as we can see in this example, organizations is a global service because it has to do with accounts and regrouping them together, okay? The other thing I did is that I created my own new account for this. So I created an AWS Course Master account and on the other window I have an AWS Course Child account because I don't want to use my main accounts for this and I wanted to do a demo with two separate accounts. So if you want to follow along, I would suggest creating two new accounts, call them as you want, so that you can have one master and one child account within your organization. So from the master account, I'm going to go ahead and create an organization. Now, within the organization, we have to define the accounts within it. So as we can see right now, this is very quick, the organization is created and we have the root uh, organizational unit. And within it, we have the AWS Course Master account, which is the master account or also called the management account. Okay, so we're going to do that. And the organization is created. Now we want to add a second AWS account into this organization. And to do so, I'm going to add an account and we have two options. Either we want to create an account and you specify the account name, the email address of the account owner, as well as an IAM role that will be created in the target account to be allowed to be managed by the organization. Or you can invite an existing AWS account, in which case you need to provide the email address associated with that account or the account ID of the account to invite. And for this, I will just do uh, the name of my accounts. So I will just add the email, which is AWS child account at stefanmarek.com. And this is good to go. We can include a message if you wanted to and add some tags, but I will just go ahead and send my invitation. So now my invitation has been sent to my other account and we can view all pending invitations through this UI. And it has an expiry date. So if in two weeks it doesn't get accepted, then this will expire. So what I can do next is go to my organization on my child accounts. And on the left hand side, there is invitations. So I click on invitations. I'm going to refresh this page. And now we see my invitation from the master accounts. So as we can see in this organization right now, we'll get full control. So this organization has full features enabled and can assume full control of your account. So as soon as you're part of an organization, you, you accept to be controlled by whoever is the master of that organization. So we'll accept the invitation. And here we go. Now my account, the child account, is enrolled into my AWS organization, and we can only see the organization ID as well as the feature set. And an account may have the ability to leave the organization. So back into my AWS organization. Now if I go to my account, so I click on AWS accounts, as we can see now, within my organization, we have root, and within root, we have two accounts now, the master and the child accounts. So what we can do is now organize our accounts using organizational units or OUs. So for this, we'll just do action and we can create a new OU. So to do so, we'll go on the root, okay? And action, create new OU. And I can have one, for example, for my dev accounts and I create the OU. I can also go again in here and create the OU. And this time I will say tests. And maybe last time we'll have a prod. So I'll just do a prod OU. And maybe within the prod OU, we have different departments. So I can, again, create OUs within OU. So I can have HR if we have an HR department that has production applications. Or maybe we have a finance department that has analytics applications within it. So as you can see here, you can create as many nested OUs as you want. And if you go all the way to your organization, and then you look at the OU now, we can see we have root, dev, and right now, no accounts within dev, prod, and we have finance and HR within prod, and then we have test. So as we can see, we can start organizing the accounts and we can have many accounts in our organization within specific OUs. And the reason we do so is to have service control policies. So what we're going to do is first take our child account and we want to move it into, for example, the finance department within prod. So I take this account and I can say move, and then I can have it into my finance department within my prod OU. So I move the account there. And now if we have a look, we can see that the finance department contains a course child. It's best practice as well to leave the management account under the root OU, but you could move it if you wanted to. Okay, so now we want to enable service control policies 
to restrict what my course child account can do. So to do so, we go into policies. And as we can see, we have four different kinds of policies available to us right now. And they're currently disabled. So what we can do is take the important policy types that we want and enable them. So one we definitely want to enable is the service control policy because this will allow you to restrict what our children account can do. So this is enabled and I go back to policies. We have other ones that could be of interest. For example, backup policy allows you to deploy organization-wide backup plans to ensure that all your accounts are compliant and have backups enabled. Or tag policies also to help standardize how you use tags within all the different accounts in your organization. But for the sake of this hands-on and from an exam perspective, I believe only service control policies will be used, but still good to know that you can apply a backup policy across all the accounts and a tag policy across all the accounts as well. Okay, so service control policies are enabled. And so now what we'd like to do is to have service controls policy defined. So I'm going to click on service control policy and this is the documentation, excuse me. And here we have one service control policy that has been created so far, which is the full AWS access, okay? And the full AWS access allows all the accounts to access all the services. But we can create a new policy and attach it. So we can create a policy called, oops, we can create a policy called deny access to S3. And this will deny access to the S3 service to whichever OU or account this is attached to. So in terms of the policy, we could find a statement. For example, we can find the S3 service in here. And within S3, we can say all actions and the resource is going to be star as well. So I'm going to have a star in here. So we deny anything on S3. So the very simple policy and I'll call it deny S3 as an SID. And then I will click on create policy. So this when attached to my accounts should deny access to S3. So we can have a look. So let's go into our accounts. Okay, so if we look at the root OU and I click on root, as we can see, there is enabled policy type, which is service control policies. And if I click on policies, there is one applied policies that is attached directly to the root OU, which is the full access to AWS, which allows everything on root and all its children to access all the services within AWS. So if we look at the children of the root OU, we have, for example, the prod OU. And if we look at the prod OU in terms of policies, there are two policies, one that is attached directly, which is the full AWS access, but also one that is inherited from root, which is the full AWS access. So it is duplicated this one for some reason. And then if I go into children and I go into finance and click on policies, we have three attached policies. So one inherited from prod, one inherited from root, and one attached directly. And this is probably because I've enabled service control policies after creating the OUs. So this full AWS access was attached to every single element within my accounts. And if we look at the children of the course of, of the finance uh, OU within the uh, prod OU, and you click on the course itself, uh, the account itself, and go to policies, now we have four. So we have full risk access four times, so you understand at least the concept of inheritance, which makes sense. And you can just inherit things from root directly. You inherit things from the topmost layer. But what we can do is if we go back one up, so if we go to my prod and finance OU, for example, we can attach a new policy. So I'm going to attach a new policy, and this one will be the deny access S3. I will attach it, and now that means that anything within my finance OU should also have this inheritance. So if I click on my course child and then policies, as we can see, the deny access S3 has been inherited from finance. So how do we make sure that this is working? Well, if I go to my account, now my child account, and open the S3 console in a new tab, we are in S3 and the buckets are being loaded. But as we can see, we don't have permissions to list buckets and therefore we cannot use Amazon S3. And this was due to the policy we have attached to the OU. So it's quite powerful because we are able to restrict what an account can do overall, even though I am logged in right now with my root user, okay, with my root user of my account, I still don't have the access to Amazon S3. So this is very powerful and this is how SCPs work and hopefully that makes sense for you. So that's it for this hands-on. 
I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next lecture.